It was a new story that broke hearts across the nation. When the body of Sarah Payne was found on the 17th of July 2000, it brought the search for the eight-year-old girl to a devastating end. She had been missing for over two weeks after being snatched from the street by a known paedophile called Roy Whiting. The search for the blonde schoolgirl had captivated the whole of Britain. Soft, gentle little girl. She hasn't got a horrible bone in her body. Somebody out there must have seen her. They must have seen her on that road. They must have seen her. Sky News anchorman Jeremy Thompson was just one of those following the story. The scale of the search was huge right across the country. Everybody was looking for Sarah Payne, hoping that they might help police to find her. In the end, of course, as so often happens in these sort of cases, the perpetrator was right under the police and nose, just a few miles away from where Sarah Payne had gone missing. It was a case that affected everyone involved, including lead detective Martin Underhill. That picture shows innocence. It also shows happiness. Those eyes, those beautiful eyes that are smiling at you, actually, they show completeness. And all that was taken away. And her photo will live forever. The murderer, 41-year-old Roy Whiting, had long been suspected as her killer. But it took over seven months to gather all the evidence needed to finally put him behind bars. He was a loser, he was a loner, and he'll always be remembered for the wrong reasons, which is, he was a monster who killed a little girl. This killer's story begins almost 60 years ago. Whiting was born on January the 26th, 1959, in Horsham, in West Sussex, and he grew up in nearby Crawley. It was a family that was beset by quite a lot of tragedy. So there were six children, and three of them died in infancy. So an awful lot of trauma to cope with quite early on in his life. Life for the young man didn't get any easier. Whiting's parents, George and Pamela, divorced when he was in his teens. Roy Whiting left school without any qualifications whatsoever. Um, he was somebody who didn't really get along in school. He wasn't particularly academic. Um, he didn't really fit in at all, whether socially or in, in terms of his studies. So he was always a bit of an outcast. Whiting was clearly a bit of an oddball, a loner. Friends described him as a bit of a Billy no mate. When you combine that with the insecure attachments he had within the family, that the lack of relationship with, with his mother, um, the, the disrupted relationship with his father, it does start to, to write a bit of a script. As he entered adulthood, Whiting found a passion for cars and he began working in a local garage. In 1986, he married a woman he'd met when she was working as an attendant at a petrol station. And they had a child together, but they separated and, and ended up getting divorced. By 1990, 31-year-old Whiting was living alone in his hometown of Crawley. It's pretty clear to me that Whiting developed an increasing interest in young girls, girls in their early years, and he, I'm sure, fought to some extent to control that obsession.